Hi, this is the final or the review video. Uh, I said I was going to add it a little bit later. It's why everything is a little bit different than what it was before. So I want to review the quiz five stats um, and some of the difficult questions for the online group. Uh, also discuss the upcoming exam, um, review the memo scoring, and get into the executive summary assignment. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison. On your left, you'll see the in class or trick classroom face-to-face -face, uh, section. On the right, we've got the online, which is both grad and undergrad. Um, what I'm seeing here, uh, and based on things that we cover in class, um, I think I'm gonna have to get the classroom students to spend a little bit more time uh, when they're taking the quiz and make sure they're reviewing their notes prior to beginning it um, because the online students are doing better. And what's also interesting is that the uh, undergrads, uh, their performance improved substantially uh, this last week. And we'll see how that trends over the next few weeks. So uh, the, for the online class, you had two questions, only two questions really give you difficulty. The first was, which industry has the highest non-fatal incidence rate. It is agricultural, forestry, fishing, and hunting. 56% uh, of you get it right. One rule of thumb is, is there a show on Discovery Channel about it? Then it's probably the most dangerous. <laughs> the other had to do with uh, which columns from the 300 log go into the calculation for the DART and is H&I. And so you can see right down here, H&I is days away, that's the DA. And then transfer restriction, that's the R&T in the DART. And over here, I've got a cutout shows agriculture is 5.3, substantially higher incidence rate than the others. The midterm exam is next week. And it is an open note, open book. We don't have a book, but open note. So I want you to prepare your notes. Um, I haven't selected the amount of time. It'll probably be an hour uh, to complete it. And there'll be two parts. It'll be about 25 questions or 25 points. First half will be similar to what you were familiar with prior to this week for quizzes, be multiple choice. There may be some fill in or some essay, but I'm not sure yet. I'm probably gonna keep it simple and keep it multiple choice. It'll be um, the main topics. and But I may actually alter some of the earlier questions into something more of a application or interpretation for a particular scenario. So be aware of that. So I'm gonna have you think. The second half is gonna be problem solving similar to this week's quiz, the week six quiz format. I will not be using Lockdown Browser so that you can open up the Bureau of Labor Statistics and, and look up answers. You should be using a calculator or whatever you want in order to write things down to calculate incidence rates, calculate uh, the no loss time, loss time ratio, and then you'll be interpreting it. You'll be, uh, or, or taking a result similar to what you're looking at for the executive summary. Um, and determining the performance of the safety program in comparison of two or three options. Here is the scoring for the memo. Um, the top is the overall for the online class. Uh, pretty good. The breakdown from undergrad and grad. Grad did a little bit better in certain areas. I think the areas they did the best at was the actual quality of the writing and the use of data as a basis. Those were the two big deciders. The face-to-face -face section um, had some difficulties. As you can see at the bottom there, uh, half of them didn't follow the, the instructions for what they submitted, whereas the online class, only 15% didn't. Uh, but still, everybody did pretty well. You know, the, for, the, for an average to be you know, in the B range, uh, I'm happy with that. Although for grad students, it was in the A range. So uh, to be expected, I guess. Some of the observations, recommendations that you can take into the next assignment is that please make sure you understand what the assignment requirements are, which I'm gonna go over here in a moment, and that you create a detailed planning document. You don't have to use the form that I you'd used in the memo or the one that's on the Canvas page. Show me your work. Show me what in, what, what you, show me the process in which you decide, you, you know, what am I trying to say? Break down the technical report, identify the key findings and how those key findings led you to the recommendations you make, make to management. That's, I guess that's the best way to put it. Make sure you're building a doc, planning document. Make sure you save it as a single PDF when you're done. The actual executive summary should be two pages or less. Keep it direct, keep it simple. Uh, you can use tables and figures from the report, but that's all I want you to use from the report. Everything else has to be yours. And 
making it look professional means a lot to me. Um, the, the students who got the highest scores on the memo, it didn't look anything like the example. They did their own, and I thought that was fantastic. Make sure you read it out loud before you submit it. At this point in the game, every you know, grammar is important, spelling is important. Choosing the right words is important, or right conjugations. Okay, um, make sure you are developing a narrative based on study results. That's the whole thing. You're using results to support or to influence management. So make sure that they line up, that this is the result, and therefore we should do this as a response to make things better. Uh, definitely uh, use the tables and figures as justification. I just said that, and the recommendation should be should reference a topic from the class. Some people search things that were out there. Just I don't want you to Google search. Use what we what I assigned as for readings. I did it for a reason. Here's the assignment. Here's the Canvas page. There are some documents I removed because students were pestering me with questions, so I took them off. Uh, here is the assignment itself. Here's the description. I talked about it in the last video anyway. Uh, the technical, this is the report that you review. So the data has been analyzed, the answers are here. The report's been written for you, you're only writing the executive summary. But it should be based on the results of the analysis. Here's an example you can look at for format, but don't follow it. Uh, the only thing you should do is copy and paste either a table or a figure from the technical report. It's a PDF, so it's easy to do. But all the language, everything, it should be your own. Okay, uh, everything should be original. Oh, and I should probably tag this for um, to check for plagiarism. And then if you need additional help, there's some really good guides here that I'd vetted um, on writing an executive summary, um, two sources for you. And um, yeah, this is more of the assignment sheet. So it's due on the 17th, by the 17th, I should say. And I give you some other tips here on what's expected. So start here, especially my in-class group. Uh, you review this report. This will give you the basis for what the results were. Choose what you want in order to generate recommendations or a narrative. Here are the study objectives so you know what it's looking for. In the planning ad doc, yeah, start with identifying the tables and figures that you want to use. That should be the basis for everything else you do because you can copy and paste those from the report. Quick reminder, this is a writing attentive course. I talked about that at the very beginning because I just listened to it again today. Uh, for the 43 students of the undergrads, the memo and the executive summary, they're each 5%. So combined, they're 10% of your grade. For grad students, they're 10% each, 10% each, so 20% of your grade. Just reminding you on the breakdown. Next week, our guest speaker is Jim Jones. He is a wealth of knowledge. He has over 20 years experience in insurance and with working with United Heartland. So he's going to talk about workers' compensation, specifically Wisconsin workers' compensation, because it's a state um, law. Uh, he'll talk about the experience modification rating, and he'll talk about other loss control strategies and careers. I'm interviewing him on Monday the 18th, so I'll be posting it after I kind of edit it a little bit and do a, a timing of the different topics. So there'll be one big video. It'll probably be a WebEx video, I apologize, but I'll break down at what points of the video he talks about certain subjects, so I'm going to do it that way. Again, we're recording it on Monday. It'll be posted Monday night. Um, it's just he's so busy this week with so many things and last week I was busy so again it, so that I will create a, a short video on work comp and some of my experiences so you can watch that but the big thing is going to be the Jim Jones in class he's going to be speaking for over two hours so it's kind of an advantage there the week after next uh, we've got a, a renowned speaker coming to campus uh, Jason Coons he works for 3M and he's done a lot of research on leadership and influence. And so um, I will try and get it so we can broadcast it or at minimum record it and provide it to you. So if you're on or near campus, it'd be great to have you. Um, like it's gonna be like at five o'clock on the 26th and we're still getting the classroom nailed down. And um, in case you need money, BCSP Foundation is providing scholarship, but it closes very soon, I think in like three or four days. Uh, you can go to the bcspfoundation.org grants and go there, or um, I'm also going to be sending this stuff out through email. And that's all I got. You got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, keep up the great work.